We're at story number 54, Last Will and Testament. And this is a story about a very famous uh, Zen practitioner named Ikkyu. Ikkyu lived in Japan in the 14th century, and he was instrumental in developing a tea ceremony. He was also very instrument, instrumental in the connection of poetry and Zen practice. So this is a story about Ikkyu's life. Now, when Ikkyu was young, he lived at the emperor's court. His mother was a courtesan in the, in the imperial family, and he had a very luxurious life. But something happened, and his mother had to flee, run away, got transferred, got exiled for some reason. So she went from a place of great comfort and luxury into a place of poverty. And she was so poor that she could not support her son. So she went to the local monastery and said, uh, would you please take my son and raise him? Which is a common practice in those days. There were so many orphans and there was no social system to take care of them. So many monasteries would became uh, de facto orphanages. Ikkyu studied Zen. He grew up in the Zen tradition. He learned it inside and out. And he became quite famous. Now his mother also was a practitioner. His mother also was interested in the nature of mind, interested in the nature of compassion, interested in the nature of foundation. So when she died, she wrote Ikkyu a letter. Here's the letter. To Ikkyu, I have finished my work in this life and am now returning into eternity. Eternity, endless space, infinite. Infinity, I'm now returning to infinity. I wish you to become a good student and to realize your true nature, your Buddha nature. You will know if I am in heaven or am I in hell. If you become a person who realizes that the Buddha and his follower Bodhidharma are your servants, then you may leave off studying and work for humanity. The Buddha preached for 49 years, and all that time he found it not necessary to speak a single word. You ought to know why. But if you don't, and yet wish to, avoid thinking fruitlessly. Your mother, not born, not dead. How is that for a, a letter from your parent? Yeah. <clears throat> so it's a real uh, koan, it's a question, it's, it's a letter of pointing to something beyond words. There's a case in uh, the Mulman Khan, the Gateless Gate, one of the collections of koans. I think it's case number 45. It says, Maitreya and Shakyamuni are the servants of another. Who is that other? That's the koan. And in a way, that's the same question that she's posing. Who does the Buddha serve? Who do the wise people of the ages serve? Now, if the answer to that is me, that's completely wrong. And yet, it can't be separate from this life. Who does the world serve? Things are happening all around us, constantly, constantly, constantly. For whose benefit? And to investigate that koan, we have to get very quiet. We have to look deeply into this moment. We have to look deeply right at that place of awareness of the world before thought. We have to look beyond the limit of, of words. 
You know, words have a limit. Cognition has a limit. You have to look beyond the limit of those things. Your mother, not born, not dead. To look into this moment and to see right now, in this instant, what is it that moves and speaks? Now, if it has a beginning, a middle, and an end, that's over time. The beginning has already passed, the end hasn't come, but in this moment, what is it? In this moment, alive or dead? Another famous koan, a teacher and his student went to a, a funeral. The person was in a casket. The student goes up, knocks on the casket and says, alive or dead, alive or dead? The teacher says, I won't say, I won't say. P.S. The teaching of Buddha was mainly for the purpose of enlightening others. If you are dependent on any of its methods, you are nothing but an ignorant insect. There are 80,000 books on Buddhism. If you should read all of them and still not see your true nature, you will not understand this letter. This is my last will and testament. To understand beyond the limit of words, beyond the limit of 84,000 volumes, what is beyond the limit of the cognitive mind? It's very very intimate.